Command Point now has merch. Link in the description. Warzone Studio was kind enough to send out a couple of their battle mitts for us to review, and I have to say, you guys, I absolutely love them. The mats we received have the kill team layout on them, making it quicker and easier to place objectives and terrain pieces to create a good play experience. The mousepad material the mats are made from is an upgrade from the foldable cardstock boards that you are used to seeing come in kill team boxes. Warzone Studio are even helping support the channel by giving us a kickback for each order placed using the link in the description below. So make sure to check them out and thank you to Warzone Studio for sponsoring this video. Hello everybody and welcome back to Command Point. Shane here. I'm joined with uh, by Ryan. Ryan, how's it going? Good. And today, Ryan, we're doing a, a tier list. We haven't done one in a while. Yeah, it, it has been a minute since we've done one of these. Um, you know, the new balance data slate came out how many weeks ago now? Uh, it's been like a month at least, I think. Yeah, it's yeah, had some time to cook, so. Yeah, LVO happened, so we're we're past that point. Yep. Um, but before we get into the tier list, guys, just a couple quick channel announcements. First of all, we are going to be overhauling our Patreon. Um, so uh, it's, if you're currently in the Patreon uh, on the Grot or the Knob tier, nothing's going to change for you. Um, except for the fact that the knob tier we're going to be doing um, on every new podcast, we're going to be doing a Patreon uh, Q&A segment at the end of each episode, and we'll be taking questions from anybody from the knob tier or uh, above. And I say above because we're going to be adding a new tier uh, called Weird Boy, keeping in keeping in sort, keeping in theme with the, uh, with the grots and the knobs. Um, and it's going to be a $6 tier, and we're going to have... Uh, uploads i'm going to be doing basically uh, a lot more tts battle report stuff and i'm just going to be uploading my um my recordings of my tts games uh which i primarily do for like competitive tournament game practice um so if you want uh to watch my tournament actual practice games uh go check that out it's going to be a a six dollar um a month patreon role so check that out if you're interested and one other thing i want to shout out is the uh, Command Point Tournament Series. Uh, on the topic of TTS, we're hosting another uh, TTS tournament, uh, Tabletop Simulator, on the Command Point Discord. And registration ends in about 12 to 13 days from this recording. And uh, we've already got like 60-something people registered. So go check that out. Uh, sign up for CPTS and play games with people all over the country. Uh, do we want to get into the tier list now, Ryan? Yeah, for sure. Let's get into it. All right. So um, I guess before we pick any like factions to like rank right away, I do want to go over briefly. I've been thinking about this a lot more lately as far as how to categorize teams and like what makes a team good and, and what are like, rather than looking at it from like a, like a gut feeling like a type of analytical standpoint, um, I have like I'm trying to like assort criteria in my mind at least to like justify how do I want certain teams to like like what do I want from a certain team to be considering it like high tier I guess mm -hmm. and I think the main things for me and let me know what you think about these I think the most important thing in this game more than anything is activation numbers um, the more activations a team has. Uh, the better it is, and I think I'd rather have a team with... Like, if I'm playing in a matchup, I think it's more important to have one more activation than your opponent and than to have, like, a better armor save across the board. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, uh, activation count is, is the big one for me. Beyond that, um, model retention. So, if your team doesn't have, like, a ton of activations, they need to be able to, like keep their models on the board some way uh, that's usually in the form of like tankiness like nurgle legionnaires for instance they don't have activation but they have model retention because their models stay on the board and you get more activations out throughout the game um and then uh the other one for me and this is the other way you kind of get around uh you know activation count is um threat ranges uh, this is like a big one where i think Teams with really big threat ranges can, at the very least, create like asymmetrical threats in the sense that maybe you're getting out activated, but 
you can threaten from a farther distance than your opponent can. So in that way, you can kind of control the pace of a game. Um, and, and you can set up in a spot where you can hit them, but they can't hit you. So um, these are the things that I have found to value when evaluating team strength. And I think a lot of the top teams have these things in spades, or if they lack one of these things, they typically have the other two, or maybe they lean really hard into one of them enough where it doesn't matter. But uh, that's what I've been considering, basically. Yeah, I think those are all, like, really good criteria for, you know, I guess, like, analyzing the power level of the factions in the game. Mm -hmm. So where do you want to start? Why don't you um, pick a team for us? Yeah, I'll pick any team, any team at all. Um, let's go ahead and start with the uh, Hearthkin Salvagers. Ooh, we were just playing them yesterday. Well, I was playing yeah. them against you. Yeah. Um, so I see you've thrown them into C tier. That's just, that's just where they're parked right now. I think you're reading All my right. mind, Ryan. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> okay. A little bit. Yeah, I was higher on Hearthkin a while back. And then mm -hmm. once I started, honestly, it's these criteria. Once I started thinking about this more, they only have 10 activations, so any horde is out activating them. They are slow as heck, so they're not creating any asymmetrical threats, really. Um, and their models are, in the grand scheme of things, not terribly tanky. They have a good armor save. Eight wounds is fine. It's pretty baseline for a 10 model team. Um, but um, they are lacking like everything. Uh, I mean, as far as what I want out of like a top tier team. Uh huh. But I do think they have a pretty interesting play style. Um, they're very much like okay with you hitting them first, which is out of the ordinary for the most part. Yeah. Because um, they're not like Vetgar. They don't have like chaff models where like you just throw them up to score a point and then they die. Who cares? Like it's a 10 model team and all 10 of the dwarves are like important. Um, but you kill them and you get a grudge token and then they try to trade with you, I think is the play style. Um, they're literally too slow to like reliably do, um, recon tech ops, at least in my opinion, uh, without like really projecting your plays yeah. ahead of time. Um, so I play them with security and, you know, I don't know. They have an amazing faction tech op and they're they have the most AP you can take in the game. Yeah. I think pretty much. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, you, you've played against them a couple of times. I, I don't know. Are you, do you disagree? Uh, no, I, I don't really disagree with anything you said. Um, yeah. I mean, they're pretty mid. There's not a whole lot of crazy stuff you can do with them. Like you said, their movement is pretty lacking aside from like their one like uh, jump pack model. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think they're... I don't know if I would put them in C. Um, if I were to put them in C, I would put them high C at least. Yeah, it would be high C for me too. Yeah. I just, I think by the end of this, we're going to have teams in B that I just would rather take. And it's like, I like votan i like hearth Salvagers a lot i think they're mm -hmm. really cool i really want to them to be good i just don't think they are i think that in like a and we've had good performances from them at a couple tournaments now but it's not super common and i just i find it to be like i think i said to you the other day that i think if like everybody's playing like at a high level i don't think hearth should win like I just don't think they have enough, but they're a really interesting team, and their their play style is so wacky and unique. Um, but I still put them like a high C tier in my eyes. Gotcha. All right, so um, let's go ahead and move on. How about you pick a team now? Ooh, all right. Um, let's go with let's do Hand of the Archon because I have a lot of thoughts on Hand of the Archon, and this is like I love Hand of the Archon, so I've got a lot do. of things. I would like to say I like this is a hard one to do early I kind of wish you know I in my mind I think I'm gonna like want to change this one later but... we'll definitely have some adjustments going on the deeper we get into this list yeah I I really like I like them a lot right now yeah 
I actually do. Um, Why is that? I think that the the meta is not too bad for them. So first of all, it must be said that Hand of the Archon is a dominating force at mid and lower tables. Um, their top table performances haven't been there really since they've come out, but it's actually this team has had like one of the highest win rates since release, which is not some. It's like a trivia fact that no, I don't think people realize. This team is always winning a lot. Um, they just weren't winning tournaments. They weren't getting like podiums. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think they're pretty good, man. <laughs> I think they're in a pretty good spot right now. Um, like for a story, like when I went to Nova, I was saying before Nova, I thought Hand of the Archon because at the time, I mean, still nothing's changed. At the time. It's ridiculous saying this because Nova was like six months ago, yeah, five months ago. I was at the time commandos were like the big broken thing, and I thought that Hand of the Archon, in theory, had some play into them. And then every Archon player I told that to at Nova was like, "No way, man. they're terrible." And then I watched at Nova all the Archon players lose to commandos, and I was like, "You know what? They're probably right. I think I'm not right about this." Um. But like the with the sneaky get nerf, which we'll talk about commandos later, I think that art for Archon that like helps a lot for them. Um like the things that I thought is like eight wounds with a six up feel no pain is like a really bad breakpoint for commandos with like choppas. Like it, they're probably not killing them in two hits yeah. anymore. Um like they would with Corsairs. Um the they have a lot of really high damage weapons that can actually do damage to orcs. Um, their melees, they have a few really good melee specialists, which paired with the sucking ants, them in melee is pretty nice. They can tax just a scratch, make it plus one CP the next time they use it. And the torment grenade, like, really messes with orcs. Um, like, they're already, they don't have a lot of like built in dice reliability. Yeah. So, like, if you permit injure them, they're like just hitting on fours in melee. And, they're already spending more CP because Justice Scratch is getting taxed. So it's like, I think that a lot of that is still true. I'm not saying it's a winning matchup, but I, I know that Brett from Six Sided Legion took them to LVO. And I think he he was either top eight or he was really close. Um, And I know he beat some commandos in his run. So maybe this team just needs more players willing to like crack the code with them at like top tables but i don't know they're definitely high b at least maybe a yeah I don't know. what do you think you've played um, them more than me yeah i know um you know all the things that you said make sense regarding the commandos uh matchup the one thing i do want to add is um in your personal opinion, do you think that the the tournament meta is particularly friendly towards elite teams right now, like intercession, legionnaires, etc.? I would say no. Okay. The reason I bring that up is because historically, well, not even really historically, this I feel like this team hasn't been out for that long, but um, in the elites matchup, um, just because of the way the power from pain ability works. Um, this team struggles into those teams like Intercession. So I think now is probably the best that they've been in the team's like lifespan. Just because of that, from like a, a meta perspective, I guess. Okay, I can see that. I always hated playing against Archon with Legionnaires. Yeah. They always just stressed me out. Maybe Intercession's better against them. Um they just like the perma injury just sucks. It sucks. Yeah, the, yeah. The perma the perma injury. injury thing does suck. Um, but it's like you, in order to get your team fully online using like the power from pain stuff, you have to be killing stuff. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I've injured your models, but I'm not killing anything, <laughs> and I'm just bouncing off. So I mean, there's a few tools that they have in their arsenal that can reliably kill. A space marine but i think it's only like two sources really uh that being like the blaster um yeah, but yeah. The, um oh and the fusion pistol on the leader yeah it's a hordy meta which is good for archon i think yeah um, they trade very well into hordes in melee 
Yeah, I mean, they're either a B or an A for me. I can't put them mm -hmm. lower than like a high B. Yeah. So we'll park them in B right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's move on here to... Uh, let's talk about Legionnaires. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hitting not, close to home not, here. Not that we do enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Legionnaires. You know, uh, so they have that model retention. Like the with Nurgle specifically, um, so like I, I think that the meta, so like elites are not great right now, but I think it's overblown how much they struggle. Um, I still think you can do well with Nurgle Legionnaires right now uh, if you're playing them well. Um, they're great on Into the Dark. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess we could talk about Beta Decima a little bit in this, but I don't personally think it's going to be a big thing in tournament play at the moment. At least, yeah, based on what I'm seeing. not right now. Maybe I'll, it's so yeah. New. Maybe I'm yeah in time, perhaps. But I think that right now Nurgle Legionnaires are pretty much fine. Um, I think they're better than Intercession for sure. Um, they're definitely better than Strike Force Justian, obviously. Between them and Phobos, it's a little tighter, but I um I really do think that Nurgle Legionnaires are fine. I would not put them above Hand of the Archon anymore. Um so I mean I think B is a fine place for them. I could be convinced to move them to C, but I I don't know. I think B seems okay to me. Yeah, I don't know if I would put them as low as C. No. If you play against Kasserkin, they're going to feel like a D. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you're not going to play against Kasserkin every game. And, you know, um, I think that a lot of the team's strengths still exist. Yes, it sucks that it feels like every time a team's bad, the go-to thing is to make them better against elites. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's just kind of the game we play. So, um it's tough playing elites. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Nurgle Legionnaires can do it, though. They're they're fine in B tier. All right. So uh, your turn right, to pick. pick yeah. Yeah, it's me. Um, let's do. Oh. So many choices. There are so many choices. There's too many teams in this game, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's do. Hunter Glade. Hunter Glade? Okay. Glade. Interesting. How about Hunter Glade? So they got buffed recently in the last data slate, I think, right? That was um they they got some reroll buffs. Uh like not super meaningful things. Honestly, it was weird that they got buffed at all because there are much worse teams in the game that were not getting buffed that last data slate. Yeah. Than Hunter Glade. Um but you know, I mean I think that they are like kind of a perfect picture of balance right now maybe okay they're very honest there's not like an alpha strike there's no blast weapons on the team um they don't have any gotchas everything's pretty much right out there for you to see um they have you know they're good gunners that are you know like the plasma and the arc rifle and then they have their big guys with melee and they're obviously strong in melee and they're they got a lot of wounds but um, I think that they are a little bit out tricked by some of these other teams. At least yeah. Teams. I know you played a little uh, Hunter Clade earlier this year, Ryan, right? Yeah, I uh, I took them to a tournament and played them a little bit leading up to that. Um, you know, you and I, I think we both thought they were kind of like a sneaky good pick for the meta at that time, um, mm -hmm. because this was like. I think it was a little after the data slate. I say earlier this year. It's it's February 1st, so this was like last year. It was about a year ago. Yeah, it was yeah. about a year ago, yeah. Um, I think it was like right after they had gotten the uh, the buff where there was like no longer a detriment. The f yes. The first time oh, you yeah, took well. a um, whichever like doctrina, doctrina imperative you chose. So it's it like, was, oh, so this was uh, a lot after it was a while after that. But there was it was mostly like a. 
meta thing because I think a lot of teams got nerfed around that time, and Hunter yeah. Blade was like already decent, and they were like, like untouched in that wave. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, a lot. Nothing's changed with them other than no. they've gotten some small buffs. Yeah. Um, I still think like. I think they struggle into the melee awards. Um, yeah. They don't match up particularly well into a lot of top teams. I actually do think they're okay into commandos, relatively speaking. Um, they can get up to 11 activations if they want, which is really big in my opinion. I think it just puts them ahead of a lot of 10 activation teams. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're fine um i don't know if they're probably better than nurgle legionnaires i guess i'm not i'm saying nurgle legionnaires they're probably better than legionnaires yeah mm -hmm. um but they're i mean there's no doubt they're b tier right yeah okay let's move on all right um let's talk about uh void dancers Ooh. yeah yeah, so I mean permanently good, right? Yeah. I think is how you can describe <laughs> answers. They're never not good. No. Um I feel like especially on the new beta Thessima terrain. Oh yeah. Right? Because it's like you just Maybe wanna be best. you just wanna be flying all over that board, and I think that's that is the map for this team. Um so yeah, I mean they're just permanently good three APL flyers. How many models are in the team? I think it's like it's eight bodies. Yeah, eight bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the thing about them is they never win a big tournament. I don't know if they ever have won a big tournament. They they remind um, me of uh, Luigi. Like always second fiddle, always the bridesmaid, never the bride type yeah, vibes. I mean, I think they're like permanently low a tier <laughs> okay and yeah I, they're definitely yeah yeah yeah. like i think there's an argument to be made that archon is a better team but i'm not sure if i'm on that train yet because void dancers are just still so like versatile and they're so simple um i think out of and you you might disagree with me on this out of all of like the white dwarf teams that we have on this tier list i think the harlequins are the are just the best just like the most like relevant because i mean we'll get to the other two in a minute but like hunter clades hunter clade is all right but like has yeah. any of these of these white dwarf teams like reached the heights that the harlequin or the void dancers have yeah like other than maybe nerf hunter clade um like maybe worm blade no not definitely not um no i think it's pretty safe to say at this point they're the best of the white dwarfs okay um they're like i don't know they're they're just good they're yeah. always good they're solid they've they, got tricks if this was a beta deci materialist they would be s tier yeah so there's <laughs> that if you do play in beta decima there you go um yeah, I, I think Harlequins are just uh, a solid team. They're very strong. They're, I think they're going to run into problems in terms of like, hot like top table against some of these teams. But like they, for instance, they don't have a lot of activations. They've got eight activations, but they have they're really fast. So they have that like asymmetric threat range that they can create, um, and. The weird thing is, like, as far as model retention goes, they're so swingy. Like, it could be these the Harlequins live forever because they're making four ups and they're making their Segrax yep. roll, or they're not and they're just dying and they feel like they're made out of like tissue paper. So it's a weird one. They're very swingy. They're dice dependent a little bit in that way. So, um, yeah, but I think what they're capable of is is really they can go really far oh and they suck against commandos so oh, hard so to win immediately b tier <laughs> immediately i think they're the bottom of a i'm okay with okay that. cool all right um so yeah your turn yes uh let's go with let's go with a new team ryan yeah 
Let's go with Blades of Cain. Okay. While we're talking about a three APL eight model elf team, let's talk about the other one. Yeah. So, um, I am not very high on this team. Uh, I just don't like. I don't see it with my. I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I, I, when I look at the rules, I don't see it. Um, they are. They do have that that threat as, that asymmetric threat. They're really fast. They have three APL. They can move super fast. Um, but their models, like unlike the Harlequins, they don't have invulns. They can get the once per game justice scratch on a guy. Um, they don't hit particularly hard. You kind of have to like. I think there's matchups with this team where you just kind of have to get creative. Like, how am I going to do damage? Yeah. Um, and I mean, yeah. I don't, and, and the other thing too is out of the box, the the most common version of this team is going to be striking scorpions, and I'm pretty sure that's those are bad. They're it's not a, very good. They're a competitive non-starter if you're running the mono striking scorpions. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the shame of it is you really, the best team probably runs a combination of all three because of that attack op. Yeah. Um, the Howling Banshees are the best. You probably take the one, maybe two Dire Avengers just to stand on a back point. Yeah. But like, I don't know, like you're kind of doing like cartwheels and, you know, somersaults and then you're getting shot in the face, right? It, it, looking at the rules for that team, it feels like a lot of options and complexity not really complexity, I guess a lot of modularity, let's call it, um, that really amounts to splitting hairs. There's nothing that stands out in that team to me, aside from, like, the Howling Banshee and the Striking Scorpion Exarch, like, being really good, depending on the matchup. Mm -hmm. So, uh, overall, I, yeah, I think they're, like, pillow-fisted into some teams, um, most melee hordes, I think they can chew through in melee, but it's like, I don't know. They're not, it, just the fact that, like, there's no, like, specialists. There's no, like, gunners. There's no, like, sniper. Yeah. You know, it's just, here are your three different flavors. It's Neapolitan Eldari. And it's like, there's nothing crazy in there, like, pistachio. <laughs> you know, to like really spice it up and get and give it life. So I think they're a pretty bland team. Um, so, so I mean, I, I'm willing to not put them in D tier. Like I'd I say, bottom C. Yeah, until they prove otherwise. That. Yeah, because I'm not sold on them being good yet. I still think they. I'm of the opinion that they struggle into elites. Some people have said it's not that bad. I need to see it, um, and I haven't seen anything close to uh to suggesting that that blades of cane are a good team but there's enough cogs there that maybe there's something and they're really fast and they're three apl so i don't know yeah all right so um i'll go ahead and pick now and i'm gonna pick uh kill team justian Ooh, strike force yeah, Strike well, Force Justian, and uh, the reason why I'm picking them is because, like, Shane, I honestly want to put them in D tier. Yeah, they're kind of a nothing, right? They're, they're, just they're like literally nothing. nothing. They don't have they don't have tac ops. Yeah, the heavy bolter notoriously has like one less attack than like all of the other heavy bolters in the game. But for what it's worth, I think most TOs are ruling it that the heavy bolter they has are. five shots. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. There's that. Like I saw somebody say that, you know how the, the captain, when he's alive, you get an extra CP each turn. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw somebody say, I think it was jokingly, but it was kind of true that their faction ability is, uh, they get to tactical reroll more often. <laughs> no, that that's literally it. <laughs> Cause you have like nine CP or something stupid, but like, I, I don't know. Like this team is just nothing. Nobody's yeah. playing them. They're like intercession, but I think less stuff going on. Um like they're more yeah. exciting just because you have a variety of models as opposed to just intercessors. Um but yeah, I'm honestly kinda niffed about this team. 
uh, not having like any TAC Ops yet or anything, like didn't Games Workshop in a Warhammer community article say that there was going to PDF, there was going to be a PDF coming out for this team, and this just has not materialized yet? Yeah, I think it's kind of dead on arrival. Like it's like they released it and then forgot that they released it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's literally um, what it feels like. I'm fine with. I was gonna say C tier, but honestly, yeah, I'm down for D tier. Yeah. They're pretty uh, nothing. So I don't think anybody's taken them to like any tournaments or anything either. At least that I've seen, like national level events. And yeah, not placed well anyway. I'm sure somebody's taken them somewhere. But uh, all right, let's do. Let's do. I mean, uh, uh, what do we want to talk about here? Let's do. Should we do an S tier? Oh yeah, let's drop it on them. They've waited right, long we're not enough. Do, I'm gonna say veteran guard okay let's just get them up there never allowed to be nerfed always the same always too good untouchable yeah um and honestly it just gets every time a data slate comes out so long as some team didn't randomly get buffed presumably like good teams get nerfed and then vet guard like temporarily go back to being like a top two team um, and there's always like one team better than Vet Guard. It's just like obscenely broken and it kind of overshadows Vet Guard. But Vet Guard is, it, it's so stupid how this team is allowed to be the way that it is for how, how long is this? Two and a, almost two and a half years now? Yeah, almost two and a half years. Uh, this team has seen, I can't remember any changes that have been made to None. this team. None at all. The, the, grenade change but that was a global change it yes. affected that guy but it affected other teams as well yeah um th- they are nonsensical i i think that they have everything almost that i um talk about they have activation count they have 12 activations that's all you can ask for they have uh s- they have some degree of asymmetric threats where um the demo mine is just doing far too much. That model needs to get nerfed into the ground. Um, but I mean, you can probably find a recording of me saying that two years ago. Yeah. And hasn't been touched once. Uh, you can plant the mine through physical walls, not on Into the Dark, but like an Octarius wall. You can place it on the other side of the wall. Makes zero sense. Um, it's got three inch range, which is with a move, move, move. In 3 APL, you can move 7 inches, plant the mine, free dash away, and blow it up and threaten something 11 inches away. Uh, like, they can control initiative uh, pretty well, better than most teams. Yep, with um, the chronometer. Yeah, if you're lucky enough to win initiative and kill one of their big threats, um, pretty good chance that they're going to in-death atonement and just trade with you. Um yeah, I don't know. Uh, Spotter, for some reason, it's they have like all these rules that other teams that have come out also have, but they have better versions of it. Yeah, why I do not understand. Um, and and they're not the best team right now, and that's the sad the sad truth of that is that they're probably not going to get nerfed. This team's not allowed to get nerfed. I don't understand why any top player will tell you that they are a perennial top three team. Um, but I don't know. Uh, they're not easy to play, so therefore they're, you know, I think, and they're accessible in the starter set, so their win rate is probably not very high, um, at least not to a problematic level. I'm sure it's fine, but uh, I just, like, I don't know. <laughs> Change the mine. Make it so you can't plant the mine on the other side of a wall. Maybe make it two inches instead of three inches. Make it so the spotter doesn't turn off uh, the engage or the conceal order if you're in heavy cover, because there's a bunch of rules like that. Um. Yeah, just like anything, like do anything to this team. Yeah, like, I don't know how many tournaments they need to win before we actually like adjust them. But yeah, we're just stuck with uh, permanent S tier vet guard. So yeah, the any team has yeah. Um, the team has you know all of these special rules, specialist abilities, stuff like that. That is that you see in other teams. But the thing is, usually those other teams will have the same rules and abilities, but they are markedly worse, and they will have less of those special rules and abilities. So um, this team, for the entire lifespan of this game, has been 
you know, overpowered. Um, and uh, definitely should get nerfed. But I just don't. I think the team's been out for so long that it's just uh, Games Workshop has been reluctant to do so. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. uh, the way I would change the demo mine is I would go all the way with it. I would make it obviously that you can't plan it through a wall on open. That's just silly. Or on yeah. Into the Dark. Obviously, you can't do that there, but still. Um, and then I would treat it uh, as an actual mine and not a, uh, a, a C4 pack in Call of Duty that you're running up the board on, whipping it at somebody, and then clicking the detonator. I would I like would, give it like a proximity thing, like the Phobos Haywire mode. Literally, you plant it. Yeah. You plant it, and it's once per game you can plant it. Or the Kasserkin mine, right? That's like the Kasserkin mine, exactly. See, the Kasserkin, they have a mine, but it's incredibly, it does not even compare. It's yeah, not, you would think it's that not Phobos, really a mine. It's a wep It's a it's a gun. Yeah, you would think that the Phobos or Kasserkin, who are by all accounts thematically speaking, far superior to a <laughs> to a guardsman, to a Creed guardsman, would be better at doing this than they are. But yeah, I, I can see not. a I can see a Phobo Space Marine whipping a a melt -a mine at somebody and it blows up in their face. I can see that. Yeah. That you can argue, yeah, oh, he's okay. a space marine. But anyway, let's not get let's... too deep into themes here. We'll move on yeah. to yeah, another on team. Forever. Yeah, let's um, let's now talk about the uh, we'll talk about the Sisters Novitiates. Yeah, I was playing them recently. I took them to a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a little higher on them, and then I played them a bunch, and I think that they have too many boogeyman matchups. In my opinion, okay. I was, um, I thought they were A tier for a little bit, but I think not. I think they're probably B tier. Like they're still very good, but um, I think they just lose to too many teams. I think they lose to the to the hordes. Like they lose to Vet Guard. I think. I think they lose to Blooded. They super lose to Commandos. You might as well just not show up. Um. I think they like even like crew are good against novitiates. I think. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, like, they're horrible against felgors, um, but they're they're pretty good into any team that they out activate, um, and I think they're good against other some of the other ten model teams. Like they're good against hearthkin. Uh, they're great against Kasserkin, Um but they're just like. I don't know. The, I think they just the the models are so flimsy. You have to play so well to to make it work. And uh, I don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze. I guess. Um. You've played against them a bit now, Ryan. What do you think? Yeah. Um. I think Cas like Caster can definitely hate playing against them. Um. Mm -hmm. Just because of the, like the the blinding ore of the emperor or whatever it's called. Um, you know, they do have a medic specialist, which also Casterkin really don't like to see. Um, and they, uh, the, they trade well into Casterkin with like melee and stuff. So it's like a bunch of things that Casterkin hates. Um, I, I do think they're good really quick. I do think they're good into melee horde or the, yeah, the melee hordes like Geller Pox and Cultists. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're kind of, it's funny, I think they're a stat check for some teams, but they get stat checked by a lot of the top teams. Maybe not stat that. checked, but just like gate kept. They're a gatekeeper faction. Yeah, like I, I actually think they lose pretty hard to Hunter Clade still. Um, I know back in the day that was like a really Close. bad matchup for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think they lose to Hunter Clade. I think you can put novitiates above legionnaires for sure. Um, as far as hand of the archon go, I have no idea. I've never played that matchup, and I, I off the t I oh, wanna... I have actually. You and I played it. Oh yeah, um, we did. That was close, no right? Yeah, it was kind of a bloodbath. I think novitiates take that, but you know, I mean, they they have um really good threat ranges, so they can create those asymmetric threats really well. 10 activations, I mean, they are hard capped when it comes to, like, 
what they're able to do against teams that have more activations than them. I think unless it's a team like a like a melee horde, like I said, where you can really exploit the threat ranges and like go full engage, um, they're playing very cowardly and they're they're not able to to be very aggressive on the board, especially with their models being so flimsy. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think they're right in the middle, like kind of middle of the pack. I want to say that they're better than Hunter Clade. They're maybe better into the field, I guess. Yeah, that's fine with me. They're quite you, good. And then you said right. Hand of the Archon takes the matchup, or they take it? It's close. Um, I'm not really sure who wins that, truthfully. Okay. Um, it seems like a pretty 50-50. But yeah, they're, they're good. I, I'm ragging on them, but they are a strong team. All right, uh, so... And then it's my turn, so... Oh, man. Um, I want to... I kind of want to make, like, a hot take. Yeah, sure. Let's That's do what Tearless are all about. Kasserkin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do Kasserkin. The team that was buffed last data slate for no reason, and um, everybody said was, like, amazing. Um, and I complained about the buffs, but my reason for the com for complaining about the buffs is that it helped them where they were already good, and it did nothing for them where they struggled. Uh, and I still believe that to be true. And honestly, I I don't. I, I think that they're. I mean, you look at how they're performing. It's exactly the same as pre buff. Like nothing changed because <laughs> it's a, it's a complete non factor. All it does is like polarize the matchups more. Um. And yeah, I mean, like the reactions to this team after the buffs, I mean, this might be one of the most overrated teams ever, like post buff Kasserkin. Um, They are just the same guy. Uh, and I think they're worse than Novitiates. They're probably a worse team than Hunter Clade, truthfully. Um, I wouldn't put them above Legionaries, considering they just gatekeep elites, but like they're not an A tier team, people. Like if you were able to top 10 with them before, you still can. But they're not like this top tier, like meta chasing type of team, like I think some people expected them to be. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I'll go ahead now and I'm going to throw uh, Blooded. I'm going to throw them at least in A tier. I like that, honestly. Yeah. I think Blooded are pretty good. They are the problem with blooded is that they're like they're always pretty good, I think, but it's like there's certain teams that they are just better than them that are very like a, the same kind of archetype. Like that guard is just better than blooded. Um, I think Navis Breachers are kind of just better than blooded, although I don't know about that. Maybe not. Um, they're worse than Inquisitorial Agents in my eyes, but. Blooded is just like such a solid team. And I like they have the activation count, which is really good. Um they have the, they, they have that. Do you think they have the model retention? Not really. Um they there are some models that are like, you know, when you're a twelve activation team, having like an ogre on the board is an issue for for some teams to deal with. Mm -hmm. Um. So I don't know if they have like a ton of model retention, but they do have some guys that are tricky to remove. Um, they have some defensive tech for their threats, like uh, the jump in front of the gunner. You know, like the get down the, the savior protocols for blooded. Right is a really good one. Um, they can set up threats pretty well in my experience, just with the. You can plus one APL a guy with uh, a blooded token, I believe, or under the gaze of the gods, maybe. Um, you have a comm specialist. If you take the enforcer against a team that you out activate, you can, you know, order a model that's gone to dash, and then all of a sudden next turn he's in he's in threat range where he wouldn't have been before, and you can do that after your opponent staged all their pieces. Um, so I think that you know they. They can really flex into their kit against teams that they they out activate. Um, the problem is, I think the team is just too honest most of the time. Like they're just like 
they're not very like they're not going to grab a ton of points on turn one they're not like vet guard where they start three inches of the board um they do have some ga2 that you can use which i think they should use sometimes instead of taking like the commissar but um yeah no i, I think the blood are just great all right who do you want to talk about next Oh, let's, you know, I, we put, oh man, do you think blooded, sorry, do you think they're ahead of Void Dancers? Um, I think they are. I think they are, yeah. I, I, I honestly think they are. Okay. I think I agree. I don't know, it just feels like the White Dwarf teams, like, have a ceiling. And it's like, the Void Dancers are right there. Okay. Uh, let's do Warp Cup then. Oh geez, speaking let's of get real sad. Let's let's go yeah, really. Uh so they're D tier. Um they are like I don't, I don't even get it. Honestly. I don't think I, anyone gets it. I d this is the like this team has gotten buffed like fifty times, I feel, and and like nothing's changed. Uh it's like maybe it's just like the skeleton of this team is just like Yeah. Rotten. Yeah. Um, but they are just like they get battered by shooty hordes. They can't out melee melee hordes. Um, mid sized teams typically have the armor piercing to take them down, and goats die so easy. Um, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know what you do with warp coven. I think they're maybe the worst team. I don't think they're the worst team, but they're down there. They're a D tier for sure. Like, it's to the point where when I think bottom tier, Warp Coven is the first team that pops into yeah. my mind. Yeah. Even if they're not necessarily the worst team, just because I don't think what, I don't know what you could buff about them to make them good. Like, genuinely really good. It would take like a complete overhaul. Yeah. And I think that's what that team needs. And maybe they're yeah. due for one. I mean, they are a White Dwarf team. So maybe, you know, they'll be a thousand, a thousand suns like kill team, kill team. Uh, coming out at some point that would be nice that would be cool i think thousand tons is kind of a cool aesthetic you could do a lot with that yeah i think they're very cool um yeah and somebody like pointed out how like the zangors have like no interaction with sorcerers in the rules in this team which is kind of a bummer like when you read the rules like there's almost nothing that connects the two it's they're just like pieces they're just there yeah together pawns yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's Warp Coven D tier for sure. What All right. Uh, let's go and talk about let's talk about the Space Marine Scouts team. Ooh, these yeah. guys are I like, cool. I think they're cool for sure. Um, I think they're like. I don't think they're B tier, honestly. I think they're probably C tier in like the Votan category. I do think they're better than Blades of Cain, though. And are they better than Votan? So they have some unique stuff. Like, I think these C-tier teams all have something in common. They're all, like, lacking in those fundamentals, but they have, like, weird play styles that, like, kind of almost work. Um, like, scouts have, like, a very strong turn one presence, and they do all of their cool stuff on turn one, and then after that, they're just like a regular team. There's like nothing special really going on after that first turn. Um, they don't hit elites particularly hard. Um, I think the like they have a comms with the leader basically, but it's like kind of awkward because it's when the leader activates, and so like you can't like if you can't if you don't have visibility on the guy you want a comms buff, you can't move and then comms buff him. You have to like you just don't get to. Um, and I think these nine and ten model teams need a little flexibility in terms of what they're able to do. Like, it's just another example of like, like why does Vetguard have all these good things that like these teams with less bodies than them have? Yeah, like it shouldn't it be the opposite. It's like it's good literally things? reverse power creep. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Um, so scouts though are like. They're interesting, and I wouldn't be surprised if somebody made them work in the future. 
like without buffs. But on paper, I'm not seeing a super strong team. I'm seeing a team that's almost like too balanced. Like they're, they're too fair. <laughs> they they can't really win anything, um, in my eyes. Okay. Uh, let's do. Oh, there's a lot left still. Let's do. Yes. <laughs> Pathfinders, Ryan. Pathfinders. Oh. What do we think about Pathfinders? Uh, Pathfinders, I'll... another team that got buffed. Oh no, they're not that high. They're not. What? That high. Okay. I think they're A tier for sure. And Top they didn't a. actually. Yeah, it's weird because they didn't do well at LVO. But we are not reactionary. We're not going to let that change our minds. No. Because Pathfinders uh, are really good right now. Um, the they're back to having twelve activations with the recon drone. This is nice because they were always having 12 activations, but they were sacrificing the recon drone to do that. Now they just get the recon drone and 12. Um, they're like, I don't know, like uh, on some boards, you're just going to like, they're the best team in the game. Um, fortunately, Into the Dark exists, but it's like, I, I don't think we should be buffing Pathfinders and Into the Dark personally. I think if you're playing Pathfinders, like you're running a skew team, you should have to deal with the skew, you know? Like that's part of running that kind of team. Um, but on like you could always roll up to an open board only tournament and just, you know, kind of have the best team if the boards are set up in a certain way. Uh, so they have the activation, they have the asymmetric threat, uh, especially with the um uh I mean worthy cause is just the definition of asymmetric threat. You literally just can guarantee something. Um the like 20 inch grenade play that they can set up on the first disgusting turns. yeah um no no team is very few teams are are doing anything about that um so yeah i mean they don't really have model retention but when you have 12 guys it doesn't super matter uh you can get around that a little bit um yeah they're just kind of disgusting and yeah a tier top of a tier What do we got next? Um, I want to talk about, I don't know. What's another team that got buffed recently? Felgor Ravagers. Oh, yes. They're back. And they're back. They're so back. They are, they're an S tier. We are so back. Yeah, I mean, they, they are, I don't even know. They might be ahead of that guard, but it's close. I mean, they're like, hand in hand up there um it's weird because they got buffed and like i don't even know how much the buff is the reason they're all of a sudden considered good again i think just good players are taking them and you know uh it's pretty baffling in hindsight that it was pre buffed but nobody took the team to worlds and i have to imagine that a lot of these good performances we're seeing now from felgors wouldn't be that much worse pre buff if that much different at all like it's really helping in niche situations um yeah i mean the frenzy is just such a problem for teams and it's i it bums me out because i think the team is so cool but i don't know how they'll ever balance it it feels like every single literally every single balance data slate that's come out since this team released has been either nerfing or buffing this team and they're just caught in this spin cycle. Like, I feel bad for any long-time Felgor Ravager players. Not now, but just from, like, the, the whiplash that you must feel every three months of, yeah, it's so Jover, we are so back. It's so Jover, yeah. we are so back. Yeah, and, like, like they're going to get nerfed again, probably. And that will mean that they've been touched, I think, every data slate, right? Yeah. Since they've been released. Um, Just a mess. I mean, th this is a team that needs a rework because I don't know what... I want Frenzy to be good. Like, I want it to be a thing, but I just don't, I don't personally know how it fits. Yeah. Without being toxic or bad. Mm hmm. But yeah, S tier for sure. Orion Wilfong just placed second place at LVO with them. So, yep. uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, what next, Ryan? Um, I don't know. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about, uh, the uh, Adeptus Arbides. Ooh, Exaction. Exaction Squad, yeah. So that team got buffed at last data slate, and I think um, 
like I don't know if I would put them in B tier, but I I think they're kind of decent now. Yeah. Yeah, like I I think probably better than scouts. Like they so they have eleven bodies, so they're they're that's great. It's yep. not gonna help them into the top, like the vet guard and blooded and stuff, but eleven bodies is really nice. Um their front line of shields is so hard to put down. Uh between they have three up saves. You basically can't melee them with like anything almost. Um eight wounds is nice. And the change with the the two the buffs they made with the leader um giving out the execution order for free and then you can do it multiple times that's awesome it like gives them a little more play into like elite teams um and then the new to aquila token just you're freely moving it every time you activate the leader that's so cool so like they can play the board really well um and they can stage in a way where like trading with them is really hard for some teams so i'm a fan honestly of their current design they might be b tier oh, are they b tier for me it's kind of i gotta see it that's fair type thing you know and right now the way the list stands you know we might come back to them and buff them up to a uh, b tier but as it stands right now this is a pretty good pretty good list we have going where B is the most populated. So let's hold yeah, off on that for now and potentially come back to them. In fact, to add on to what you're saying, let's let's even it out a little better. Okay. And throw something in that D tier. So uh Farstalker Kinban, Croot. Oh yeah. Um yeah, I, just... I I honestly I honestly think they're better than Warp Coven. You think so? Okay. And that's because you can easily max your tack ops with this team. Yeah, that's about all you can do. And that's it. Um, that's the only reason. <laughs> they they have a gimmick. So, okay, here's the thing. They have activations. They have 11 activations, which is nice. Um, I, This team feels like it should have 12 activations, but it has 11. But uh, they don't have asymmetric threats because that implies that they have threats. Yeah. <laughs> They're like... They're hitting you with like, like pillows and like yeah. I don't know. They can implant you. Yeah, they can't kill you. Um, and they don't have model retention. They just don't. Uh, what they do have is a gimmick to get them six attack out points by the end of turn two, and um, they play the mission really well. I will say, I mean, Kurt is a team that I really like, so I think about them a lot, and I think you can like. A really good crew player, I think, can like take them decently far, but you're not gonna like win anything big with them, and it's probably more trouble than it's worth. It, they're the worst horde for sure. Um, like against, like look at the Exaction Squad, who has the same number of bodies. Uh, oh no, they have one less body, but the same number of activations. Um, and I have no idea what crew does against. Exaction squad. How do you kill anybody on that team with crew? Yeah. Like you don't. Um so yeah. Uh they are pretty rough. Um and I think their their lethality just needs to be better. Like all the other horde teams. I don't know. Not exaction, but like blooded and pathfinders. Like they have less activations than, than Vetguard and Pathfinders. And they don't have models that hit nearly as hard as the big guns on those teams. Yeah. So, I don't know. They're not that much faster. They are faster, and they play the mission better, but it's that doesn't make up for all the other shortcomings. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go ahead now and talk about <laughs> let's talk about the uh, the chaos cult. Yeah. I mean, the real question is: Are they still S tier? Um, I, I want to say no. They're yeah, probably not. They're really good still. Like these nerfs that keep coming are like they're not actually changing anything about the way that the top cult players are playing. It's just basically making that one play style worse, just little by little. 
yeah and like throwing in a little variance here and it does offer a little more counterplay where like if you chip down a mutant then it's you know the torment will have less wounds which is nice um they're still disgusting and into the dark and i still think a good cult player can win any tournament with them so but you know the, the nerfs are real it gives a little more counterplay uh, for teams that like if you don't have really good threat ranges i think it's hard to properly punish cast cults because they have really hard to kill models they have threat retention like once you get the torments going they're really hard to put down um you you set up the icon and pretty much anything is hard to kill so they have threat they have uh, model retention they have good threat ranges because i don't on a at the spending of one cp on a clutch moment you can have a nine inch charge or you can charge over a barricade without paying um and they they have activations they have like 11 activations so i don't know um that they're good you you could fall a little victim to variants and, and get some bad rolls on your heels when you mutate but for the most part this team is still functioning the same way um and i i think where you have them in top of a tier is probably appropriate just because they're not quite as i don't know maybe they are but they don't feel as disgusting as as the teams we have in us tier. yeah all right let's do phobos phobos right. strike um phobos to me are like they're not a tier they're kind of like legion like they're similar to legionaries in rank for me because it's like they don't play anything like them but it's an elite team and all these teams getting better into killing phobos doesn't really affect phobos because they're already the easiest elite team to kill so like when every team gets better at killing elites it's rough for legionaries because like their whole thing is they were hard to kill and now it's a little less hard for Phobos, they were already pretty easy to kill for an elite team. Um, and you were mostly relying on not getting shot at all and just playing the mission really well and hiding in smoke grenades or something. Um, and that hasn't, like, super changed. They're awesome on Beta Decima. They're maybe S-tier on Beta Decima, possibly. Um, they're just so fast. Like, they're so fast. It's cool. Um... I think they're probably better than Legionnaires, honestly. It pains me to say it. But are they better than Kasserkin? Probably not. That's probably where you draw the line. <laughs> yeah. And it's just because Kasserkin is gatekeeping these elites. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can really put an elite team above Kasserkin just because they're kind of more prevalent now. So. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go ahead and talk about. We'll talk about the commandos now. I think. Okay. Well. Yeah. We're gonna get this out of the way. Uh, they're the best team in the game. It's honestly, it's pretty disgusting how. So like, they're not the best team we've ever seen in kill team, but no team has been allowed to be this dominant for this long. Um, like the, I mean, I mentioned earlier at Nova before Nova, I remember being bummed that there wasn't yet a data slate nerfing commandos and we're in February now and they have been nerfed once, but it's like, it was nothing. I mean, it wasn't nothing. The sneaky get was impactful, but it was like very obvious that yeah. they needed much more than that. Um, and I have a feeling that they're not going to get nerfed hard enough when, when they do get nerfed. Um, like this team has all of it. I mean, they have everything. They have 11 activations, which is, uh, and even having one more activation than a 10 activation team is pretty gigantic. Um, this team should not have 11 activations period, which just should doesn't make any sense. Um, their models are impossibly difficult to kill, considering how many of them there are. Uh, they just straight up stat check teams. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down the list here and okay. tell you all the teams that 
have like a horrible matchup into commandos. Um, all right. Uh, I would say, uh, let's not say horrible. Let's say losing matchup sure. to commando. Uh, Felgor Ravagers in S tier. I think they lose to commandos. Uh, Chaos Cult, I think, lose to commandos. Void Dancers lose to commandos. Blooded probably lose to commandos. Uh, Hand of the Archon does lose to commandos. Novitiate's impossible to beat commandos. Hunter Clade, they probably lose to commandos, but it's it's not as bad as most teams. Kasserkin, they just lose to commandos. Phobos and Legionary, Phobos loses to commandos. Yeah. Legionary, they have play into commandos. It's probably pretty even. Um, Exaction Squad, hey, actually, Exaction Squad is decent in the commandos. It's not good. <laughs> It's one of their saving graces. Uh, Scouts, they just lose to Commandos. Hearthkin, forget about it. They lose to Commandos. Blades of Cain, you could not pay me. Yeah, that's a that joke. Match. That's a joke matchup. Crew cannot, you just, you. they laugh at you. You can't do a single <laughs> thing to Commandos. They could literally just go all conceal, just take all of their equipment as choppas and just charge you and you can't ever kill them. Um, Warp Coven, no. They're not going to be Commandos. And let's just go into the teams that we haven't ranked yet. Uh, I'll be honest, none of them beat Commando. Well, no, none of them beat Commando. Not one of these teams beat Commandos. They all lose. There's some people thought that maybe Breachers beat Commandos. Nope, they don't beat Commandos. This team has such an outrageous spread. I don't think they actually have a bad matchup. So, uh, I don't know. Um, Bomb Squig is stupid. Um, Sneaky get needed to get nerfed, but uh, what I expect to see is like just a scratch. They're either going to make it one plus cp or they're going to make it only work on normals so like plus one cp per instance of you using it or just yeah yeah like two cp no like um one one more each time you use it um i would expect to see that or make it not work on crits okay um, and what the problem is that's going to be the next band-aid and they're still going to be too good it's not going to make hearthkin beat beat commandos it's not going to make uh void dancers beat commandos it's going to give them a little more play but it's still going to be a losing matchup because this team has a million wounds they can they're still going to use just a scratch every single turn yeah the turns they're using it they're just maybe taking one extra damage um in situations where your opponent is rolling like a boatload of crits okay yeah you'll die like everything else in the game you 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 you'll die maybe if it does yeah. enough damage um yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just it, it's it's absurd how good this team is. And um I will say there there was a new tournament stats video that came out from Can You Roll a Crit where it's it came out like today actually. And it's all the data since July. And Commandos it's funny you look at like their if you go to that video and watch the um the podium stats mm -hmm. for Commandos they are going undefeated the most of any team every single month in over like 400 games played since July. They have like a 57% win rate, I want to say. Um, I I don't know what more we need to, to like see from this team. They've won like every major tournament since they're, they got nerfed last. So I, I don't know. Um, it's crazy how this team is the way that it is. Yeah. <laughs> They they just don't want to nerf this team. Um, they're way too good, and they they block out too many teams from from being from being competitive. Viable. Yeah, yeah. Like I, even like the the really good teams that we've had over the years have had like a couple like actual losing matchups. I don't think Commandos has a losing matchup. So there you go. All right, so. So I chose orcs, or I chose the commandos. Now you got to yeah, choose one. Yeah, that was one. your choice. Um, let's do Gellerpox. Sure, yeah. I think Gellerpox is pretty good. Um, I would think they're eight tier for sure. I think they're better than Blooded and Void Dancers. Yeah. You probably can't put them above Pathfinder. Oh, on Into the Dark, they're obviously much better than... You know what? Oh, yeah. They're, they're probably... They're better on open board than Pathfinders are on Into the Dark. So, so in that matchup, it's like. I think I put Gellerpox above Pathfinders. All right. 
I'd probably put them behind Chaos Cult, though. Okay. Although I think they'd probably have a good matchup in a Chaos Cult. So there's that. But yeah, I mean, we've kind of seen what... I mean, we've seen Orion do really well with them. Nobody yep. else really plays Gallery Pox. They're a great team, but yeah. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and choose... I'll choose the old tried and true intercession here. Uh, I'll put them... They're, I don't think they're B. Yeah, they're I think they're... I think they're... They're probably Bottoms, better than... They're better than Blades of Cain. I think yeah. they get destroyed by Hearthkin. So that's where I'm yeah. going to park them. Can we actually put Hearthkin above Scouts? Yeah. I think they're better than Scouts. But yeah, I think that's a safe place to put Intercession. They're just like... I don't know. I think that the game is kind of passing them by. Absolutely. Yeah. And the nerfs they've received in the past just kind of like make it a little harder for them to just stat check teams. Mm -hmm. And every team gets better against elites every day to slate. It's just like an ongoing thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't, I don't think they have the retention, the model retention, the quite the way that legionaries do. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't like play the board as well as Phobos do. So, yeah. Uh, what do we got next? Um, Let's do Corsairs. Okay. Recently buffed. Um, I think they're better than... Oh, God, what happened? Oh. Nothing happened. That Good. was weird. I think that Corsairs are, are better than, um, than the elite teams at this point. Probably. Um, I think they're better than Kasserkin. Yeah, I think they're better than Kastrikan. I probably wouldn't put them any higher, though. They're just like, they have the same problem, right? Where they're just dice, can, their dice can just fail them after a while. Yeah. They yeah. have the crazy threat ranges. Um, and that's it. I mean, it's really that, that's their main thing, is they can create really, really long threat ranges and, and just punish teams from far away and if they roll well they're gonna they're gonna do really well but otherwise i think they're a pretty balanced team i'm not even sure they needed to get buff mm -hmm. um let's go ahead then so pretty boring with that team honestly from what it sounds like yeah um let's let's go and talk about one of the teams that you used to main. I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about Wormblade and where you think they fit in now. Yeah, I mean, I was really... Too, right? Yeah, they got a bunch of buffs. They probably got the most buffs. Um, I was really excited about it, but I think over time my excitement has faded a little bit. Um, they, were, they became better into Elites. They became a better team, period. Um my issues with them first of all they're only 10 activations they can get 11 on turn one but only 10 activations kind of sucks for a team like this um the heavy weapons moving uh six inches and shooting now is really awesome yeah um i think they're better than castrican i think they're better than corsairs and i think that's as far as i'll put them all but right like they still have a lot of the same old issues. Um, like they just can't deal with the wider teams very well. Um, and like the cult ambush change is like fine, but it's against a good player. You're, you're not going to like actually be getting this off. Like you can jump out of hiding and get cult ambush, which is fine. But like, you know, you're good. Like I said, good players are not going to give you those shots a lot of the time. Um, so I, I don't love it a ton. And it's not enough of a threat where they have to like super respect it. Like they're probably just by playing a normal way, they're like already avoiding getting shot. Like they're just moving the heavy cover and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. Um I would I would put them middle of the pack now. I think they were probably C tier before, but those changes do make them pretty balanced. All right, cool. Uh we can talk about Maybe Breachers. Yeah. I think I know where I want to put them, Shane, and 
Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm feeling top B. I don't hate that. I, it feels like they're an A tier team, but like they've been doing really badly for a long time now. And I don't know. Like I think you could make the argument that they're A tier. Their models are like weirdly tanky. They yeah. have 11 activations. Typically, it's going to be like 10, though, because of uh, Blitz. Lots of bodies. Yeah. Or decent, Blitz, model and clear. decent model retention. Yeah. Their threats aren't like crazy long range. They're just kind of... Uh, they're they're super... I mean, they're they're Gallo Dark focused. Yes, they're really great on the Dark. They can create... They can use Breach and Clear to create those threats by like having one guy open a door and having another guy come in and like blow something up um it doesn't ring as well on open board um and they're not particularly fast so i don't think they're playing the mission amazingly um they're great into elites because of the cat um they're hard to kill i think you can put them in a tier i think they're honestly, i want to say they're, they're better, than, better than void dancers you said oh, they were okay. better than uh blooded i think they're better than blooded okay yeah I can see that. Like, yeah, like they haven't been doing well for a while, but like the the team is just like, like they're kind of like blooded in the sense that I think they're a little honest. Like they're they're gonna get you. They're gonna you're gonna get hit with a gotcha once. Yeah. From breachers and then never again. Like then you know their thing. Um, so they're a pretty straightforward team with a lot of bodies. They're just tankier than blooded, and I think they. Uh, I don't know. They're really close. It's like neck and neck for those two teams. Yeah. All right. So um, we've got left. We've got, let's talk about the Star Striders. Okay. Um, yeah, they're really good. Uh, I Dang. don't think they're better than, I, I would put, the, yeah, I like that spot there. I think that they run into problems against the melee teams. Um, they just auto lose to commandos. Doesn't matter how good they are against yeah. everything else. They just can't beat commandos. Um, they are probably getting crushed by Felgors most of the time. Um, but outside of that, they are a problem. They're basically an eleven activation team, despite being ten bodies, because of the asset that takes up an activation. So, yeah. um, that's really good. They're really fast. Um, with the uh. They, the I forget the name of the ploy, but you move an extra inch if you go closer to the enemy drop zone, basically. Okay. Um, I don't know. They're just like they have a lot of like cool plays that you can do. They're a very aura based team. They're hard to play, but um, in the hands of a good pilot, they're pretty infuriating to play against. Um, so I, I think they're they're quite good right now. <clears throat> All right, and then we, we get, were down yeah, to we got two, two left. I want to save higher tech for last because that's my favorite. I right knew you were doing it. All right, we'll talk about Inquisition. So let's do Inquisition. So this is a real good team. I before LVO, you know, I was thinking of them as an S tier, and I'm still tempted to have them in S tier, but like. I don't know. They're hard. They're another team that's like so hard to play, and there's like nobody in the U.S. that's like particularly crazy with them. Like that's like taking results. Like in Europe, you're seeing this team do really well. Yeah. In the U.S., nobody's playing Inquisition. Um, but I think that they are pretty toxic. You know, like yeah. Um, the 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 thing that holds them back, I think, outside of like difficulty to play is just you know they're they have some issues with dice reliability like quarry is like all that they have for the most part um and that's like only on one guy at a time so i don't know i i think that they're really good really 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 good against all or um what's absolute authority is just kind of yeah. stupid yeah um <laughs> That's the the nerf version. Like it was pretty insane before that. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I I just they're probably right where you have them, if not top of A. But yeah, I was like, gonna say, do you think they're kind of like 
interchangeable chaos cult and uh, inquisition right now yeah i think you can have it like that like just have the ashes of faith at the top of a tier okay a for ashes of faith yeah really all right so uh last but certainly not least we're going to talk about uh kind of your new favorite faction uh hyrotech circle yeah so i am probably higher than most on hyrotech circle um there is like a there are reasons beyond just like finding them cool why I'm playing them. Um they are so they're an eight model team, which is not great. They have very few APL. I think they have like 17 APL, which is like pretty gross. Yeah. That's less than an elite team. Um and their models are slow, but the they have the ability to pivot and be really, really fast whenever they need to be. Um, if you're willing to set it up. And if you have the foresight, basically, to, to know where you'll want that and when you'll want that. Um, they do, so they don't have activations, but they do have the other two things that I talk about. And that is asymmetric threats. They are, I mean, you can have, a, you can have the Cryptech at any point, pay a CP to leech power, and then Chronometron himself to get a nine inch move. And then dash three inches so you've just gone 12 inches and shoot something um and you can have the you can if you chronometer on the desp attack and you have intractable march on give him a third apl he can charge 11 inches and fight something and kill it and then shoot something else all hitting on twos and so they have the long threat ranges and they have um uh, model retention maybe the best model retention in the game other than felgors uh first of all they're tanky just straight up they have their their main models have three up saves and 10 12 or 13 wounds mm -hmm. you can give a guy a five up feel no pain and the guy that has a five up feel no pain is probably going to either be the cryptech or the dust attack depending on the game and that model is just never going to die and if it does die it's probably going to come back to life next turn like statistically, I don't know. Sometimes you'll get heartbroken and it won't happen, but usually it will happen. Uh, and then the nano mine just pins some teams in their drop zone and just like crushes games. So I think they're better than Wormblade. I. So here's the thing. When I was playing Novitiates, I was also experimenting with Hyrotech at the same time. Yeah. And it feels crazy to say this, but like while labbing out my like strategies with Novitiates, I, I just kept thinking like, man, Hyrotech deals with this much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And honestly, I think I put them above Archon too. Okay. And I, so... I think I put them at the top of B and I don't know if I'd go any lower than that okay so that's everything we have ranked as it stands right now but i think we do have to make some adjustments to the list here okay all right uh so bear with me here i don't what are you i don't like seeing void dancers at a and i don't know if it's just because a is looking really crowded. Um, they can move down to B, top of B. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Is Blooded better than them? I think so. I think Blooded are, are better than Void Dancers. Who else do I blooded want to Blooded have move? one turn. Um, Let's I hate seeing the Chaos Legionnaires all the way at the bottom of B. It just, like, hurts, but I think that's the reality that we're in. It just yeah, feels it wrong me. to me. Um, <laughs> let's uh, see. Maybe, I mean, if you want to thin out A, I don't think it's crazy to put Chaos Cult in S tier. Okay. Would you put Inquisition in S tier? But then S tier is getting too crowded. I think I would leave Inquisition yeah. in A tier. Okay. Um, anything else here? Yeah, I feel like Justian might be better than uh, Warp Coven. 
they're probably better than crude too <laughs> yeah i know i was thinking that <laughs> um intercession or scouts i think i think scouts are still a better team yeah i i think so too it's like i don't think either team is really going to win anything anytime no. soon but yeah it's a tough call they're just like different flavor of the same space marine i guess yes and it's like do you want to have more rules then you take the scouts just because of all their like turn zero shenanigans um bu -bu -bu -bu. Ryan, Tyranids took top eight at LVO. Where would we put Tyranids if we were ranking them? Top eight LVO? I mean, I guess like bottom A. That doesn't even oh, feel I... like right oh, to I say, though. They're probably, I think that they're probably truthfully better than all the teams in C tier, but I don't think I'd put them higher than low B. I just don't see how. Like, how does that matchup go into, like, Legionnaires, for example? How do According you think to Jeremy, that goes? Yeah. So he said that he would take three Warriors, five Gene Stealers into Elites. Okay. And the Warriors would all be Weapon Beasts. Um, I kind of like it. It sounds cool. Um, I don't know enough about that matchup. It's a really gamut. Um, like, I think they're the only team that's worth talking about right now compendium wise yeah i guess you could say talons are like probably as good as most of these b tier teams outside of that i mean i can't even uh, demons too it's like th those three teams are like easily b tier and yeah on into the dark i'd say demons are like a tier but on open board <laughs> obviously it gets a little worse yeah um but yeah, I mean that's the only team. Every other team, I think, would be D tier lower. So all right, cool. So I think this is the tier list. This is the tier list for uh, February twenty twenty four. Look at that fat B tier. I think the game's doing okay outside yeah. of commandos. Outside of commandos, yeah. <laughs> Should we? Commandos are do we thing. want an S plus plus tier for commandos? No, I I don't think so. Okay. They're just like they just need. It's been too long. It's been way too long. Yeah. Get him out of here. I'm sick of him. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like how oppressive they are to other teams. Yeah. They're just No, you're right. Being being so good into the field that it's like seventy five percent of the teams don't even have like a decent matchup into them. Uh it's definitely yeah. like troubling and that's I mean like that's I guess you could also say Vet Guard. Are, are I think like... Vetguard is at least. I think Vetguard's a little harder to play. Commandos are yeah. just like so forgiving. Is my thing. Like you yeah. can mess up a lot more with commandos than you can with Vetguard. Um, and you know, a top top, top players aren't going to mess up generally at all. Um, yeah, that's not true. Top players mess up, but they're not going to mess up. Often. So it's like the margin of error for commandos is like pretty wide. Mm -hmm. like you can you can stumble quite a bit. And still be totally fine. Like it, sometimes when I like, I've had players tell me like when they're playing against commandos, it's like sometimes they'll like make a mistake, the commando player, and then in their mind it's like, all right, well if he makes like two or three more mistakes, then I think I'm in this game. Mm -hmm. But like, what a horrible thing to have to even think about. Yeah, you now. need to prey on your on your opponent making mistakes. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's the tier list. I'm cool with this. Yeah. All right, cool. Looks good to me. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in and watching our tier list video. Um, you know, like Shane said earlier in the podcast, we have revamped our Patreon, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, you know, if you are if you're interested in any of that at all. Um, outside of that, thank you to all our subscribers and everybody who's who is already supporting us on the channel here and uh, through the Patreon. Join the Discord. Join our Discord, like Shane said earlier, where we're running uh, TTS tournaments. All of that information is going to be down in the description down below. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you all again in the next one.